My name's Mike Ellis. I have a problem. I rescue, refurbish, restore and revitalise vintage drums, in particular Premier drums. In this programme I'll share with you my adventures, ups and downs, ins and outs, triumphs and tragedies as I lavish some TLC on vintage British drums. Welcome to The Drum Fettler. Yes, it's the Drum Fettler. Welcome one, welcome all, except those of you who smell funny. Well, you're welcome as well, but could you pop yourselves through the sheep dip first before you sit down? Thanks ever so much. Now, where are we up to? Well, I'll tell you. We're waiting for the two bass drum claws for the Blue Shimmer bass drum and the drum heads for the Blue Shimmer floor tom. Hopefully, we'll be hearing the sound of the postman coming soon with those missing bits. Also, we've got possibly something else rather interesting, yes. Remember the yellow Beverleys? Well, I think today's the day that we're going to start work on that bass drum. So, stay tuned. You'll enjoy it. So come and join me in the magical world of drum fettlage. Pull up your magic, fantastic fettling trousers. Yes, the ones with the reinforced, super absorbent gusset. And we'll go off over hill, dale, and into the meadows of drum fettling and vintage fiddliness. Oh, it's ever so lovely. Come on, let's go and see if there's anything waiting for us. I'm hoping we're on the final straight now, the home straight for the Blue Shimmer kit. I've got the claws here, the missing claws. As you remember, I was a little short in the claw department. Not anymore, thanks to my good friend Jeremy, who sent me the appropriate ones. So we can get those polished up and ready for the drum. The hoops are done. Just got to do the inlay on one of them, if you remember. One had the inlay, the other hoop that came with the kit was not a proper Premier hoop, didn't have any inlay, so we replaced it with a real Premier hoop, but I've got to put some inlay into it, so that's what we'll be doing. Voila. The Blue Shimmer bass drum is finished. The next to do is the heads on the 16 inch floor tom, which still haven't arrived. Hopefully we'll be here soon. And then that's it, the Blue Shimmer kit's done. And we'll be on to something else. Hello and welcome to the inside of a Beverly 24 inch bass drum. This is one that's going to become a yellow bass drum to go with the other yellow drums. As you can see, it's very well appointed with the inside shell of, um, well, stuff that goes on on the inside of a drum. Very nice. So, shall we take a look outside? And here we are on the outside of the property. It's looking a bit uh, sad, really. Luckily, it is going to become the uh, bass drum for the yellow kit. So, as you can see, this has got some sort of paint on it. So, that doesn't matter because this wrap's going to come off. That's going to go because I'm going to blank that off. So, it's almost like a virgin bass drum. Um, <clears throat> this hoop, don't need that because I've got a couple of new ones that I'm going to be using. I'm thinking of colour coding them so they're coordinated um, but we'll see I don't know I might change my mind I usually do on these sorts of things but we'll see so 
what I need to do now is I need to strip this of its hardware, get rid of the wrap and put some yellow wrap on it. Another day, some more polishing in line. First, eating. Mm. Heads for the Blue Shimmer are here at last, courtesy of our good friends at Highwood Drums. So that means I can get these put on the 16, and that's it, the Blue Shimmer kit is finished. Well, here we are, fettling fans. The Blue Shimmer floor tom is done, it's finished. The heads are on, the legs are on. It's all ready to go. And join its siblings in Blue Shimmer heaven. Happy days. Sent some pictures to the client, had a word with him. He's very, very happy with the results, and so he should be. It's a beautiful kit. It's come out lovely. It's really, really nice. So, he's coming to collect that before too long, so he can take it home and give it a bit of thwackage, which is always what you should do on a kit. Thwackage. Never hurts. Anyway, there's a possibility there's some more work coming from that particular gentleman, so remember, Keep an eye on what's going on here at the Drum Fettler and you'll see some more lovely drums being rescued and brought back to life and back into pristine, lovely playing condition. In the meantime, this. Now, I'm sure you will recall the HR9 and the trials and tribulations I had with it, namely the hoop and its pitting. Now, like most people, I thought the best way to deal with this is send it to an expert, to some platers who would strip it down, replate it or polish it. Well, I've got to say that the interest from the local companies I tried was staggering. Or should I say, the disinterest was staggering. I decided, because I'd had some success with linishing an old Royal Ace shell, uh, a brass shell that had damaged chrome on it, that I would try the same with this and see if we could get a decent result. Initial tests are good. It has a distressed look, but a distressed look is better than a flaky look. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry on working on this, get rid of all the uh, flaking chrome and just sort of rough up the existing chrome so it has that sort of stainless steel, brushed steel look. Hopefully it will be a success and if it's not, well, I've learned something. So if you don't try these things you don't know whether or not they're going to work. Worst case scenario is it will go back on not looking very nice and distressed rather than not very nice with little bits of chrome coming off and getting stuck into your fingernails worse still in your eyes. If you find yourself in need of premier parts and let's face it who doesn't pop along to the website even if you can't see what you need drop me a line through the contact form also goes for Beverly drums, hammer drums and of course Olympic. What do we have here? What do you mean you don't know? Haven't you been paying attention? If you remember, which I'm sure you do, in the first series of the Drum Fettler, I built a 14 by 12 snare drum. Now, this started out as a regular Premier marching snare drum with a flow beam mechanism, but I decided to dispense with that and do something rather exciting with it, and that was to turn it into a resonator snare which is what I've done, and it's here. I'm telling you this again because the fettling vault at Blenheim Towers is just full. It's full of drums. I'm running out of space, so I have to dispose of some of it. And this is the first one that's coming up for sale. Yes, you can earn this beauteous drum if you so desire. So, let me tell you something about it. Let's say, 
It's a 14 by 12 birch shell with beech reinforcement rings. It's been fitted with the 0632 strainer and it has on the other side, as you will see, the matching 063245 butt plate. Here would normally be the Premier badge because that's the normal position for it. There is another vent in the same position on the other side. Now I opted, as I'm sure you will recall, to put a vinyl sticker badge on here. So it's in the more normal kit snare position for badges. But this does leave open the option to remove that, flick that vent out and put a badge in should the new owner decide that's what they want to do. It's a resonator. That means it has an inner shell. As you will see, there is a inner liner inside here, which I fitted with my own fair hands. It's a nice tight fit. Now the resonator gives it a little more focused sound and some say more volume. The lugs are the original high tension lugs. It's got some matching steel hoops. On top is a vintage Evans Uno head. On the bottom is a new Evans head. Got 20 strand wires. Now there are a couple of little things that you ought to know about. It's not quite perfect. Since it's been in storage there has been in one section just here a little bit of lift on the wrap. Now I don't know if you can see it but it's hardly noticeable hardly noticeable and the bottom hoop has got a few signs of pitting. Now the wrap is a vintage wrap and when I say vintage it means it's old which is why possibly that lifting has occurred because it was around 40 years old when I acquired um, some sheets of it. It's not been stored ideally, the wrap that is. It's showing its patina and character again. Patina and character, yes, those are very much the key words with this drum. But if that's the sort of thing that bothers you, then I will quite understand why you wouldn't want to buy this. Oh, that's fair enough. But if that's not the sort of thing that bothers you, and you like your drums having a little bit of character and patina, then this could be the one for you. What does it sound like, I hear you ask? Well, I think we should find out. you have it. If it's something you think you should own, which I think you should, send me an epistle. So the epistle's in here. Who knows? You could be adding this to your armoury of lovely snare drums. We have here the stripped 24 inch Beverly bass drum shell. Lovely condition as usual. Birch shell tree rings, a bit dirty inside but that can be cleaned up, the outside's okay but that's obviously going to be wrapped. Now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be filling the holes here where the tom mount was. I'm also going to be making an infill for the tom holder. Now you can't just throw in a big blob of wood filler there because sooner or later it'll just fall out or crack and crumble. So I'm going to get some scraps of birch ply that's left over from various resonator inner lines that I've done over the years and fill that hole with it so that'll be the next thing to do on the list. I've also been considering my hardware options for this job. Now it's a yellow wrap and I had a think last night and I thought what would be awfully spiffing would be to use black hardware, not all of it, not the lugs, but on the 15 and the 13, instead of using the chrome 39235, I could use black ones. I think that would look rather smart. And I could do the hoops for the bass drum, because they're going to be new hoops in black. I 
think that this set off rather nice. The other thing I'm considering as well, this has been drilled for the 298 folding spurs, the later ones, and I've always been a fan of the disappearing spurs. Now I know not a lot of people like those and they have difficulty with them, but I quite like them. I quite like the retro look. So I'm thinking of using the 1297 version of the Premier Disappearing Spurs. Now they're not the ones with the lever spring, they're the ones that actually put a, a wing bolt on them. And I could get some new spurs, probably even 10.5mm, because I think I've got some of the later mounts with a bigger hole. So I'll have a look at that. The other thing is, they can also be black because I've got some which I think were excess stock or something. I don't know where I got them, but they weren't chromed. They're just unfinished metal. So a bit of primer, a bit of black spray can, and I think that'll look rather, rather good. And it will match a nice little sort of edging to the kit. So I think that's the way I'm going to go. But first I've got to dig out some ply for the hole where the tom mount was and get that all glued up and ready for continue to size. Right now I've got some scrap pieces of ply here and they've got a little bit of a, a radial on them which will be helpful for it to fit in the hole. So what I'm going to do with the first one, I'm just going to mark out the hole. So that will end up on the top of these plies uh, so I can cut round it and hopefully it should just pop in when this hole has been prepared and cleaned up. That's the adhesive on. What I'll do is I will stick those together a bit later when the adhesive has gone off and then I will cut it to size. Whilst the glue is doing what it does, i.e. getting a bit sticky and tacky and ready for joining together, let's get the holes filled on the top hole. Right, well that's the filler done on the Beverly shell, so that means I'm going to have to leave that for a day or two so for the filler to go off, um, then the next thing on that part will be to sand it back, make it all lovely and smooth, and then put the little wooden infill in, but I've got to make that first, and then we're going to do the spurs. So I'll go and find the spurs. They're here somewhere, and I think they're over here. So. Let's go and have a little dig. And here they are. Now, what I'm looking for is Finished ones. There's one. That's what I'm looking for. As you can see, it's not been crowned. So that is ripe for a bit of painting. So let's see if I've got another one. Oh, there we go. There's another one. So we have the spurs. Tremendous. Put these back and then we can move on.
had some fun today, made some progress, which is nice, got the blue shimmer kit finished, so the client will be coming and collecting that soon and taking it away, giving it a good thwack and enjoying it all being well. Also, starting work on the Beverly bass drum is nice. But that's just about it for this edition of the Drum Fettler. We'll be catching up on the Beverly bass drum and other things of a vintage drummage type thing in the next edition. So join me then, won't you? I think you should. Jolly good. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you soon.